Boy, it doesn't get any better than this. It's relaxation, it's summer. Sand, sun, sand, salt. Oh my, sand, salt calibration. It's time to get going. Here we are calibrating our truck in this beautiful summer day. The first thing we want to make sure that we do when we calibrate a truck is put down a lot of the information about the truck itself. One, what truck it is, because each calibration is specific for each vehicle. There's three things to remember when calibrating a piece of equipment. One, the gate opening. The second, the speed. And the third thing is the auger setting. We're going to set the gate right now. And because this truck is going to be used primarily for salt, we'll set the gate opening for approximately two inches. For those who would use sand, sand salt combinations, the gate opening might be a little bit more. What we're going to do right now is pull the pin and set this for approximately two inches. Once it is set, what I'll do is I'll walk across the other side and we'll actually measure it. It's important that you measure it specifically for each truck and each type of material. As I mentioned earlier, it is far more important that you measure the gate opening. Each truck is a little bit different, so therefore you should measure it from the bed of the trailer right up to the bottom of the rubber. And three quarter inches. Oh. It's important that you measure and write down for each material what the gate opening is. The next step is to go into the cab and set the auger control. As you can see, maybe the most difficult part of our calibration is getting the tape from underneath the chain. But what we're going to do now is change the auger settings so that we can collect the data for the different materials that we're working with. Matt, what I'd like you to do is I want you to set the auger setting for one, and then I want you to count or actually watch this for one minute. I'm going to step down, count the revolutions out back, and then what we'll do is we'll work right through the whole August setting, and then we'll, by the time we're done, we'll have all the settings. Okay. Oh, Matt, run your truck between 15 and 2,000 RPMs to imitate it being loaded, okay? Oh, Matt, did I show you the fancy tool we created? I took a little dab of grease on a piece of paper with an arrow on it. It makes it much easier to count the revolutions on the shaft. I'll put this here. Whenever you're ready, one minute between 15 and 2,000 RPMs at August setting one. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. All right, one minute. Five. Okay. Under August setting one, mark down seven. Okay, put it at August setting two, run it for the same minute, and again, Remind you, 15 to 2,000 RPMs, all right? Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Time. 11 and a half. Okay. Now, August setting three. Let me take two seconds to reset my marker. Whenever you're ready, Matt. Time. Okay. 17. What was the number last time? 17. Okay. What has happened is that the hydraulic system is maxed out, so therefore, even if we went all the way up to the top of the, the uh, auger, it wouldn't change anything. So we're all set as far as that's concerned. Now we get some material, measure it for one revolution, and we're fine. This is why you want to be calibrating your equipment. 
This sand pile is three times bigger than the salt pile. It is quite common for most municipalities to spread three times as much sand, sand-salt combination, than they would if they went to just straight salt. It's important to remember, as you make the transition from a sand-salt combination to mostly salt, there's an environmental impact. Too much salt hurts the environment. Too much sand hurts the environment. So from our standpoint, calibration becomes far more important that you know exactly how much you're applying. You've got material in the truck right now. What we'll do is we'll run the auger so we fill up the spinner. We make it a nice little triangle. Then what we'll do is run the auger for one revolution, doesn't matter what auger setting. We'll collect it, and that will be B, which is a constant. And then the rest of it's paperwork. See how easy it is, Matt? Sounds good. All right. Now, the high-tech tools that we use in this process are a couple of scrap pieces of two by four, a top, common scales, which you can get anywhere, and a recycling bucket. That's all there is to it, is the number one step is to load the spinner so it's a triangle. And I use the top, one, because we don't want to waste the salt. The second part is we can now start to, to collect all the material that is fresh. And what I'll do is I'll have Matt start the truck and turn the auger on at very slow and we'll build a little mountain of salt on our spinner. Matt, can you make sure that the spinner is shut off and turn the auger on low? Okay, Matt, I took our fancy tool I'm going to run it for one revolution. You listen for me for when I tell you it's all set. Okay? Turn it on. That's good. Okay, if you notice, Matt, that it's not set at zero, I calibrated the scale to account for the weight of the bucket, the tarp, and the two by fours. So when we put the two by fours in the bucket on, all we'll have is the sand or the salt to count for. So when I take the weight and it says 40 pounds, that's what the calibration is. I put it in here on the column B. So A is the number of revolutions, B is the weight per revolution gives us C. Let's go in the office and do the calculations. That's how easy it is. All the hard stuff is done. Now all we're going to do now is just do the calculations. What I'd like to do is show you this sheet. This is borrowed from the Salt Institute, which gives you the calculation points to go from pounds per minute to miles per hour. So what we're going to do right now is take the amount of revolutions, which is column A, times column B, which is the weight per revolution, and let's get C, which is pounds per minute. So if we look at the first one, it's 7 times 40 pounds equals 280 pounds per minute. Okay, and we'll do the rest of the calculations. So what we'll do is 11.5 times 40 460, okay, get the little thing. You know, you should be doing this, not me. 14 times 40 equals 560, and then 680. Okay, what we have here, Matt, is the pounds per minute you are discharging. And what we have to do now is convert from the pounds per minute to pounds per mile. And the way it's done is we use this chart. If you went five miles an hour, it would take you 12 minutes to go a mile. So what we're going to do is take the 12, 280 pounds times 12, and 
12 times 280 equals 3,360. That means if you went a mile, you would discharge 3,360 pounds. That's a lot. And then the next one is going 10 miles an hour. It would be multiplied by 6. I take the pounds per minute times 6 is 1680. Then I use the pounds per minute again, which is 4.0. So it's 280 times 4 is 1120. And the last one, well, we'll do a couple of them because it's important. Sometimes you go a little bit faster or a little bit slower on your application rate. Okay, now I'm not going to stand here and tell you how much to apply, but it's very important for you to realize that you need to know how much you are applying. That's where you find your change in operations, you're saving material, and you save the environment. As you can see, you can spread a lot of material without even knowing how much you do. That's why it's important to calibrate. We finally finished the chart and we filled in all the blanks. But what you can notice from these high numbers, it's time to go out and adjust the truck. You need to adjust that gate so you apply less material. You'll save money, you'll save the environment, and you'll save a lot of material. So when you go out there, take this chart, use it as a guide, and you'll be all set for winter. Okay? If the results show that you are spreading too much material, you need to go out and reset the gate opening. Collect the material from the smaller gate opening only for one revolution. Weigh it and recalculate. You do not have to go through all the auger settings. The goal is to keep the application rate to between 250 and 300 pounds per lane mile for straight salt and about 500 pounds for mixed sand and salt. All done, have fun. I'm going back to vacation. Okay, there you go. That's all there is to calibration. 20 minutes each truck and you're back to summer. Woo!